be scary like that. Is that him? I need to know it's him. Thank you for letting me come and see you here. The, the reason I'm here is because, as he said, for the past few years, except for the last six months, I have worked with the poor. And the blessing that I had was it started off that I would do that three days a week, because that's when the St. Benedict's Mission was open. And then there were so many people who wanted the experience that I pulled back to one day a week to give room to the wonderful people, many of them from this parish, to share the joy of serving the homeless. This is not unusual. And as bad, bad as it is here in Fort Worth, you go up to New York and it's scary. How many here have seen the movie Human Experience? Raise your hand, Rahat. Is it something you would recommend? Yeah. All right. Uh, it is an amazing movie, and I was blessed to meet the producer and have actually host the star of that movie when we did the premiere here at the University of North Texas. This is a very serious situation because it's a gift that God has given to us. Not because we have homes and we have clothes, because he's given us the opportunity to serve those who are less fortunate than we are. Let me read you a couple things from scripture. By the way, you'll hear me say, I always use scripture because when I started studying scripture, I didn't really want to do it. I did it for my wife. And after growing up Catholic all my life, I finished that for eight years saying, I didn't know what it was to be Catholic until I studied scripture. So always, always pay attention to scripture. Let me read you one first. Matthew 22, verses 36 to 40. And one of them, an accuser of Jesus, a doctor of the law, putting him to the test, asked him, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart and with thy whole soul and with thy whole mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. Those were Jesus' words when he was put to the test by someone who was trying to trick him. We then come down a little bit and we come to Matthew 25. And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of these least of brothers of mine, you did for me. Anybody hear that recently? <coughs> then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them. Amen, I say to you, what you did not do for the least of my brethren, you did not do for me. So if we don't do this, we are not doing it 
before God. One last scripture. James 2.14. And you'll hear this a lot around in Texas. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you said to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well. But you do not give them the necessities of the body. What good is it? Also, what good is it? So also, faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Now what that all means is you'll hear people say, Well, all you need is faith to go to heaven. If you have faith, you'll be saved. Go to church on Sunday, put your puck in the basket, you're cool. Okay? And that's not what we believe. And that's not what God taught us. God wants us to take care of each other. The first thing that God gives each of us is a, is a gift. What is that gift? The first gift we got from God, what was it? Life. Who said that? Life. The first gift that God gave you. And along with life, He gave you dignity. Who can tell me what dignity means? One person, raise your hand, don't shut it out. I can't pick from that many people. Anybody? What? Oh, oh, here it is again. Let's take it. Stand up. Speak real loud. When you talk about God's word and God's commands, always be proud to speak loud. Go ahead. I think dignity is what you see yourself as and something that you're not afraid to show. You get up and give this talk. Come on. No. <laughs> he did. He summed the whole thing up right there. You don't need me. They're here. Dignity is that which allows us to feel good and special about ourselves and about others. That's the summary. What's your name? Jack. Jack? That was great. Thank you. I'll give you your five bucks later. <laughs> Let me tell you what the, what the dictionary says. Dignity says, bearing conduct or speech indicative of self-respect or appreciation of the formality or gravity of an occasion or situation. Nobility or elevation of character, worthiness, dignity of sentiment, elevated rank, office, station. How can you live in this and feel dignity? You can't. Unless you're really special, you can't. So what's more important for us as we go through this talk in giving them food is giving them dignity. Dignity is love. You can't give dignity unless you have dignity. And God gave you dignity. You just have to find it sometimes. When I first started working down in St. Benedict's, I didn't have dignity. I didn't know what to expect. And you're going to hear uh, some of the things that I thought. I was going down there to pass out food, mainly because my son, who he had gotten a much better message from than me, he was supposed to be here today, but he got sick. I thought I was going down there to take care of the bones. People that didn't want to work, the druggies, the alcoholics, anything you can say about a person who you don't respect. And when I talked to my son, I said, what do you do in those homeless shelters in New York? 
I said, what kind of food do you give them? What, what do you, you know, how, how do you give them clothes that they fit in? He said, no, Dad. That's my son. He says, we give them dignity. You learn their name. You talk to them. And right away I felt, that's my son. I'm supposed to be teaching him. And he's teaching me. And now I'm going to teach you. Dignity is love. Dignity is love. We deserve as a child, all humans do, because we are elevated above the animals. We deserve dignity. And dignity, another way to talk about it, is food, shelter, clothing. But there's a lot in those three words. You can see the food. Great pizza out there, right? By the way, I'm Italian, and we never served buffalo chicken pizza. <laughs> mm -hmm, not my family. But it is good. <laughs> Shelter, easy. Shelter can be these boxes. It can be a tarp over your head. It can be standing underneath the, the overhang of our roof to get out of the sun. But dignity, not so easy. Because with dignity, you have to have the confidence that somebody loves you. We all need to be loved. So as you're thinking about feeding the poor, She had the secret. It wasn't in the dish. It wasn't in the spoon. She looked at every person as if they were Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ told us that he made us in his image and likeness. So let's look around in this room. Where do you see Jesus Christ? Where do you see Christ? Everywhere. Everywhere you turn. I told Gabe everybody was going to say, up here on the cross. But everywhere you turn. That means men, when you look at a woman, you can't look at an object. You have to look at her as if she is Jesus Christ. Then you will respect her. Women, when you look at a man, you have to look at him as Jesus Christ and expect him to respect you. Now, until you have dignity, you can't give dignity to the guy and to the woman who's living in those boxes. So you have to search and you have to develop your dignity. Respect for each other, respect for your parents, respect for everyone you see at school every day. So let's get back to these bums that I was taking care of. Are they bums? Some of them are. But do we love them? Yes. yes. Are they drug, out, drug addicts? Pardon? Some of them are. I met a, a, a man, came in several times. I sat down and I talked to him. His name was Daryl. Very tall man, old, older. And if I say old, he's old. <laughs> and I said to him, Daryl, why are you here? I'm talking to you, and you're so smart. You're so articulate. I don't understand. And he said, I used to be a professor at MIT. Well, they all had stories. And, I, and in my mind, I went, right. <laughs> MIT, that's that place in Minnesota? He looked at me. He said, no. And I said, oh, oh, oh yeah, now I remember. And it's a small school, right? I knew you wouldn't believe me. And he starts telling me about the place. He 
And he really was a professor at MIT, a professor of math. And here is me sitting there thinking I'm so great, just taking care of the phone. And I said, Daryl, what happened? And he hung his head and sit at the table. And he went, and he, like he was putting a needle in his arm. And he said, the devil got me Mike, and he won't let go. This is no bone. The devil got me, and he won't let go. I have now, after three years, will not call anybody down there a bone. Because there's story after story after story of the wonderful people that I have met at St. Benedict's Mission. The wonderful people. The great joy that it gave me that I would not miss a Wednesday. No one was going to take my ship away. I loved it because it made me feel and see God in taking care of them. There, there was one lady, I used to tease them, I tried to make them laugh, I tried to make them smile. I went out there and Cecilia was there and I gave her a treat. We had gotten some nachos from a Right to Life lock in that we didn't use and we were serving them nachos with cheese. Nachos with cheese, and that's how they lived. And she said, oh, these are so good. She says, we get nachos, but they're never fresh. And these are so good. And I said to her, Cecilia, I got up at three o'clock this morning and I picked those nachos fresh for you off the tree. She looked up at me and she said, oh, Michael, thank you. I didn't know nachos were on a tree. <laughs> and the guy sitting across from her said, now you know she, why she's out here on the street. <laughs> and, it, and that's a true story. And I don't tell you to make fun of her. Here is a woman that was on the street because she didn't have the mental capacity that all of you and I have, or at least all of you have. <laughs> and I loved her more because of that, because she was simple and she was strict, and she believes that when I give her gatorade, that I pick the gators. <laughs> and she loves that, that I did that for her. They are wonderful, wonderful people. And when you get to sit down and talk to them, and you look and think of that right there, then you will understand what dignity is and what dignity can do for a person. There was a, a great man, a friar that I met, a CFR, and he told me a story. He was at my house eating popcorn with chopsticks. Because <laughs> that way he couldn't eat more than he should. <laughs> and he went over and he knew Mother Teresa. He said, I said, describe her. And he said, wow, she's amazing. So I said to her, Mother Teresa, this was when, when he was a young father, Mother Teresa, can you, what can I do? And she said, go over and clean up those people over there. He said, and I walked over there, and I looked at this one man, and I started gagging. He said, he was so disgusting, and he smelled so bad. And I walked back. <laughs> Mother Teresa, you got something else for me to do? And she says, go and take care of that man. And he says, how do you do this? She said, don't see the man, 
see who? Jesus. Look in his face and see who? Jesus. He says, I'm a priest. You're supposed to know that stuff. He walked over and he knelt down. And, and what he described to me was pretty gross. But one of the things he had to do first was he had a beard down here. But if you ever saw Father Burner, he has a beard down there too. Now, and he started combing through his beard. <laughs> Megan, behave yourself. <laughs> Megan is dignity. She really does. And he started combing and trying to cut the beard, and things started crawling out of his beard. And when he looked at his beard, he had maggots on his neck. And the guy couldn't talk. And he certainly couldn't speak his, his language. So he just kept plugging on and he kept thinking over and over again, Jesus, let me help you. Jesus, let me help you. And as he finally cleaned him all up and got his beard shaved and washed him and got all of the vermin off of him, he said that he looked into the eyes of that man and he heard the man say, Thank you, my son. And the man couldn't talk. But he got through it by seeing Jesus in the eyes of that man and focusing on his eyes and smiling at him. And I thought, I don't think I could ever be that strong. But we could. Feeding the homeless is one of the greatest gifts you will ever receive. But i got to give you some cautions. It's a whole new world down there, and they won't do anything to survive. So I'm going to give you some don'ts. They may seem hard, they seem hard to me, but I want you to trust me. Never, never give them money. They come up to you on the street, and they want money, Never give them money. But I'm hungry. I want to go get something to eat. What do you do? You take them somewhere to get them something to eat. Many times, as soon as you say, well, come on, I'll take you over that back town. Let's go run and walk the other way. Because remember, I said that many of them are down there because of drugs, alcohol, okay, bad things. And when you give them money, you may give them continuance to get what they don't need. So you don't do that. You never put yourself in danger. You always are in twos. And in this case, you are always with an adult. In the case of at your age, you never take them into your car. And as much as you want to give them dignity, you have to hold back a little and not give them your full name. So you just say, what's your name? I am Mike. And you get their name. And they say, my name is Jack. Yeah, sometimes. And you say, hi, Jack. And then five TSA agents arrest you. Hi, Jack. I hate to explain the joke. Thanks, Jim. Okay. So you get their name and you call them by name. Why do you call them by name? It gives them dignity. Man, I'm special. I'm special. And you treat them just like anybody else with some caution, okay? So don't get, you know, I ain't Mike said to take this guy home and put him in bed. No. Okay? That one movie about the football player, very unusual. <laughs> sure, come on, get in my car. You can step on me and my whole family with one move. Okay? Very unusual. I think there's a little theatrics in that movie, but it was a great movie. What was that called? Oh, you all saw that movie, didn't you? <laughs> okay. So you never give them money, you're always in twos. 
You never left them in your car. Do not give them personal information. Okay, can I borrow your phone for a minute? No. I want to call my mom. I'll call it for, for you. Okay? And you can dial the number for them if you want. Again, I want to talk to you about ways to prepare yourself. And there's, there's a lot of ways. And your ways to prepare yourself for helping the poor is being here tonight. Not just because I'm speaking, but being here tonight and all the nights that Gabe and all of your team leaders and the things that they're going to teach you about you. You are special. Tonight, you are my homeless. Tonight, you are my hungry. I want you to be hungry at home at pizza. I want you to be hungry for Jesus Christ. That's the key. Be hungry for Jesus Christ. If you build yourself up, you will build others up. Guaranteed. Just think of all the leaders that are here tonight. They have nothing else to do. They have no friends. <laughs> and, okay, Dave, I'll come home and do things to do on Sunday. Right? And I'm sure not tired. I want to know. You know, it's a great week, very easy to find out. They came here to give you dignity. Don't disappoint them. Take that dignity. I'm almost at the end of it. Last page. There's one thing that you can do for everybody in giving them dignity as you go through life. If you see someone who doesn't have a smile, what do you do? Give them yours. It's really hard. What's that? Turn that crown upside down. Good. I'll do the jokes. Now, turn the crown upside down is a good one, actually. Dustin, thank you. Because when I travel a lot, I will see tired and weary travelers. I will see tired and weary ticket agents. I will see people who for eight hours have been solving other people's problems as flights have been canceled. And the first thing I do when I see someone like that is I walk up. What can I do with you, sir? What are you doing? I'm giving you something that you won't forget the rest of the day. And then I ask them to help me. I thank them. You have the power to give dignity to everyone you come in contact with. But I'm natural. You can all tell I'm natural, right? But I'm natural. I can't do that. I'm not outgoing. You can if you remember one thing. You are in the image and likeness of God, and He ain't bashful. Now I'm going to tell you one story and then I'm done. It was within three, who brought it? It was within about three weeks. We were learning how to run the mission, what to do, what to expect. And this lady, older lady, everything you can think of is you conjure up the image of a bad lady. Is there anything in there? No. So you always check. And she had two bags like this. And we had just given her some donuts and some milk, some coffee. And she's walking out past my table. So there's a table here. There's a table here. Yeah. Okay. And she's walking out to the door. Walking like this. I'm behind the table. And she drops something on the table. And it's green. And it's very small. It's all folded up. And she's walking to the door. Reached over and picked it up. What the heck is this? I opened it up. It's a dollar bill. 
This is a homeless woman. It's a dollar bill. And I stopped her. I said, man, man, man. I reached over the table. Dude, no, that's all right. You don't have to pay for this. And I don't know where this came out of me, but I said, it's because we love you. And Jesus loves you, and he did this for you. And this is what she did. Did you not? That's for Jesus. I ran in the back. I've never seen that woman again in my life. So I'm convinced that was Jesus. And she taught me a lesson in one look. Like, you dummy, that's for Jesus. And it ripped me apart. And that's why I never wanted to miss a day serving the Lord. Get dignity in you, find dignity in Jesus, and you will go out. And there won't be any poverty in this country because you will give them the greatest financial, food, shelter that you can give them. It's worth more than money called dignity. God bless you.